Thank you for joining us today for our weekly webinar. My name is Alicia Race. I am a partner here at Four Lane, and I'm excited today to talk to you about virtual warehouses for inventory management. If you missed any of our previous videos, you can always find them on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash four lane. Remember to subscribe so you can get notified when new videos come out. You can also connect to us via our four lane Facebook group at four lane QuickBooks Enterprise. You can also connect with your peers here as well. Not only us at Four Lane, but your peers have uh, enjoyed our Four Lane Facebook group. As always, I want to mention our Four Lane on demand support service that we offer to our clients. This service is only $25 per QuickBooks user per month for up to five users. Then it drops to $20 per month per user for six or more users. We wanted to offer an alternative solution to our clients so that they didn't have to sit through long hold times and not get the answers that they truly, truly needed definitely can become frustrated. So once you become part of our on-demand support client base, you will have access to us directly. Our experts are actually working with you to resolve your issues. So it's not gonna be anyone reading from slides or articles. We will truly try to resolve your issue. And one of our core values is always providing a solution. So if we can't provide you um, with a solution, we will get back to you with one that uh, will ultimately solve your problem, right? So it's something that we kind of take pride in around here. Um, you know, sometimes there's, uh, yes, we can do this, or no, we can't, but here are the things that we can do. So don't be afraid to become one of those users. All right, virtual warehouses. So virtual warehouses, I'm really excited to talk about as we're gonna spend quite a bit of time in um, QuickBooks Enterprise today. Um, and this is a topic that I've talked to a lot of clients about. So I wanna make sure that everybody understands what virtual warehouses is all about. So virtual warehousing has become increasingly important for retailers in all industries for a number of reasons. These warehouses are used by many businesses to fulfill and ship customer orders more quickly. With the in increasing of fast shipping times, especially from businesses like Amazon, virtual warehouses are all but a necessity to stay competitive particularly for e-com or e-commerce businesses. A virtual warehouse helps businesses fulfill customer orders quickly and with lower operating cost, right? Because customers today are used to fast shipping times, aren't we all? A virtual warehouse can be a necessity to stay competitive with larger businesses such as, of course, Amazon, but Walmart as well. Um, I hate to tell off on myself, but I am that customer that checks to see if I can get delivery next day. Yep, that's me. I... I mean, if I have an option to pick from a retailer that can ship me, let's just say my fancy bling Apple Watch band next day or another that offers it two to three days, you better believe I'm going with that retailer that is shipping next day. I just don't ever go anywhere and I have things delivered to me. I'm pretty sure that is um, being spoiled 
with COVID not having to go anywhere and things getting delivered, I definitely, <laughs> I'm sure also that I'm not the only one. Um, I'm sure a number of us can raise our hands and probably admit, hopefully we can all admit, that if we've done this at least once or twice in our lives, right? So I know I'm guilty of it for sure, but this is really what caused us to have to have these virtual warehouses, right? This is what um, everyone is kind of dealing with if you were online or if you are now getting online, right? The keeping up with the shipping, keeping up with those demand times, Sometimes my clients just haven't been able to keep up because they weren't prepared, right? So this is one of the, the things that we've been talking about. So I like to show my clients that we can track virtual warehouses just like their physical warehouses. This gives companies the ability to see where their inventory is at at any point in time or at what stage it is at at any point in time. I try to create as real-time inventory workflows with my clients as I possibly can. So if it's 24 hours, within 24 hours, sometimes clients will say, Alicia, I just can't. I don't have that information. It's got to be 48 hours. That is completely fine. But if we have all the information and we have everything at our fingertips, I'm gonna try to get them real time, if not within 24 hours, okay? My goal is real time. So with virtual warehouses tracked inside of QuickBooks Enterprise, we can see all products currently in stock at a glance, as well as any products the company needs to make or order and sell to customers. Virtual warehouses, can be used by any company, large or small, it doesn't matter, mid-size, I know it's a big thing that people are trying to put in there, mid-size, so large, small, mid-size. Any company that has met their capacity at their current warehouse or who has outgrown manual inventory tracking with those Excel spreadsheets, or maybe those paper spreadsheets, or just a company that wants to run as lean as they possibly can. I have a client that works out of their house and is the only employee in his company. He's a reseller. So he purchases inventory from his suppliers. It gets shipped directly to his virtual warehouse. The virtual warehouse manages everything, tracking, receiving, picking, packing, shipping, inventory count, cycle count. They do it all. This workflow, it's all set up to be mimicked inside of QuickBooks Enterprise, and he knows exactly where his inventory is at all times. So it's something that when he first came, he said, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it, but this is what I need and he has it. And he's not the only one, but he definitely is one that comes to mind every time I talk about virtual warehouses. So let's go ahead and let's go into QuickBooks Enterprise. So I've got my sample file here. And I want to look at preferences to ensure that we have our file set up to track warehouses. In order to go to, into company preferences, let's go there and let's start in single user mode to do that. Oops, I don't want to forget. So you have to be in single user mode to make modifications at the company preference level. So if you're not in single user mode, go ahead and switch. Okay, but we're gonna go into edit preferences. Then our next one is to go into items and inventory and we're gonna go company preferences. Okay. So now that we're here, we're gonna go into 
And again, sample file, if you're questioning any of these things I have <laughs> set up. Advanced inventory settings is where we find our uh, sites and bins. So we're gonna click on Advanced Inventory Settings button. This is gonna go ahead and open up the Advanced Inventory Settings window. Our first tab, which is the one that it defaults to open up to, is our Multiple Inventory Locations tab, right? This is where we want to be so that we can enable our site, okay? You can determine what other options work best for your company, but right now we're just gonna review them quickly. I know some of my clients, they tell me, Alicia, you know, I need to track bins. I don't, I also don't care if I've got negative inventory, right? So whatever works best for you at your company who make those decisions for you, right? But right now I'm just gonna re review these so we can go ahead and um, kind of get through our virtual warehouses, okay? So the first box right here, we wanna make sure that's enabled. Multiple sites are enabled. That's what the checkbox says. This next one, warn about duplicate inventory transfer numbers. If you want, you can um, select this. However, some people don't use transfers, other people do. So if we are doing an inventory transfer and we don't wanna use duplicate transactions, you wanna go ahead and check that box. The next is when a transaction would cause inventory to go negative. We either have the first box, which is warn me. Warn me just means that if you are gonna go negative, you're gonna get a pop-up box that you can say okay and move past. It's just gonna say, hey, if you do this, you will go negative. If you don't care, you say yes, right? Now the next one, block the transaction, is where this is, the system is not gonna allow you to move forward. It's gonna give you a pop-up box and it is going to say inventory part, blah, 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 is gonna go negative, you're not allowed to do this. Probably not that last part, not allowed, but you can't do this, okay? So that window will come up, it will absolutely block you if you select this. Now for our purposes, we're gonna say warn me because again, this is my sample file. So our next two, trans, two uh, um, things here is track bin locations within inventory sites, okay? And then warn per bin location if there's not enough inventory to sell. So we do have a pop-up box when I turn on to track bin locations. This is telling us that it's gonna go into an unassigned. I'm not going to do uh, bins because we're gonna get through our um, demo today, but I'm gonna go ahead, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off, but you will see that that box does open up right underneath it once you turn it on, okay? I know I turn these things on and off all the time. All right, so now we would just say okay here. I'm gonna cancel, I've already done all this. And then we're gonna say okay here, right? Now it may tell you it needs to close all windows if you have a whole bunch open. Um, so let QuickBooks go ahead and do its thing, all right? So now that we've got our inventory sites active as part of that advanced inventory feature, we can go set up our virtual warehouses. Under list, select our inventory site list. So this is gonna open up what sites we already have. Okay, as you can see, I've set up two virtual sites, virtual warehouse one, virtual warehouse two, which is, you know, so basic and plain, but hey, they're in here. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to go with you and set up a new one. Now, I do uh, quick keys. So you can come down here and click on inventory site and new. But you can also see that control in 
which is the quick keys, will get you to the same place. So control N and it's gonna open up my new site information, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and type virtual warehouse three. So we can add a description, we can add a site contact, phone, fax, email if we need to, but we can also add an address, okay? So if I wanna add an address and um, just, it can be anywhere, I mean, obviously it would be exactly where that warehouse is. And the reason for this is because if you are gonna drop ship to the warehouse, it's gonna automatically pop, populate for you. And we're gonna go through that. But, so you wanna get your street, you wanna get your uh, zip code and everything set up properly. Uh, so we're gonna just throw something in. Okay, and so now I have my three warehouses set up. So now that we have all of our warehouses set up, well, let's go ahead and look at some data, okay? I'd like to go ahead and start at looking at the data from a purchasing perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a purchase order. I think it's a good idea to start at the purchasing perspective because you know, not all clients really use sales orders or things like that. And I think we all potentially, if we are actually doing virtual warehouses, right? virtual warehouse, my supplier needs to deliver to um, that warehouse. And so most of us would be at that point doing purchase orders, okay? So I wanna show that this purchase order has virtual warehouse one in my ship two, okay? This is where we see the one, two, three street main, wow, very, very plain. I set up Main Street a while ago. Um, but in in Austin, right, on 123 Street, basically all of these items that I have ordered from Franz Fasteners are going to get drop shipped to that warehouse or they're going to ship to that warehouse, right? So in, instead of we doing us doing drop ship to a customer, we're actually going to have this automatically delivered to that virtual warehouse. All right, so our product will go there. So most of my clients that use virtual warehouses, um, they basically get updates from the virtual warehouse either on a daily basis. Sometimes on that daily basis, what they'll have is um, access to sign into a portal to get those updates. Sometimes what they get is um, uh, item receipts or like packing slips scanned and delivered to them via email, right? Batch created and sent to them. Sometimes they get weekly updates and a couple of my clients, they get monthly, right? So obviously, as I said, I try to do real-time inventory management with all of my clients. So if they're not on that daily, we try to push for it. I give them ideas of how to communicate to those virtual warehouses and really try to get as real-time inventory as possible, okay? But what we're doing is what we kind of call after-the-fact reporting, right, or um, documenting because our virtual warehouse is actually tracking everything for us but we're going to come in and we're going to receive everything just as if I am receiving it in my warehouse I'm going to go through all of these steps because I'm going to get real-time inventory information if I mimic what is happening there all right so once I get updated of, from what my virtual warehouse is doing, cycle counts, the whole nine yards, once I get that information, I'm gonna go put it in. And I'm gonna make sure that all this information is combined with any of my main, you know, or 
local physical sites and my financials. Okay, it's gonna make sure that I have updated financials. So at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and create an item receipt. Let's just say I've been notified today. I have gotten uh, notification on the portal and we received in this PO. So I wanna create my item receipt. I'm gonna tab through, say yes. I wanna receive it against one or more of my purchase orders. I'm gonna select my purchase order. And what you can see is the virtual warehouse one automatically populated at the item level to that virtual warehouse, right? I didn't have to do anything. This is why if we set something up, we can eliminate a lot of data entry by doing it once. So I've got my PO. I'm going to go ahead and push the button, create my item receipt. I now have everything put in at my virtual warehouse. And all I have to do is update my reference number if I'm going to do a memo. And then I can save and close. Okay. Now this transaction is going to record our inventory in like in our physical, I know you can't see my air quotes here, um, into our physical virtual warehouse. And we're gonna go look at some of our reports, right, that are gonna show that we received this. So I haven't hit saved yet. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you that we actually are, this is just like if I've got inventory at my uh, local, warehouse right physical warehouse so i'm going to go to reports i'm going to go to inventory and i'm going to go to quantity on hand by site so i've got virtual warehouse one and two and i've got some other sites my other sites and they have all kinds of inventory so there's not any inventory in my virtual warehouses i'm going to go back here and i'm going to save i'll just convert this to a bill just for grins, and I'm gonna hit save, okay? So now we go back to our quantity on hand by site, and my virtual warehouse one shows everything that I've received. So now I'm receiving inventory in real time. If that's how I'm getting my updates, I'm receiving it in real time. Now, let's just say if I was a manufacturer. If I'm a manufacturer and I've got a virtual warehouse, I have a client, right, that um, they, ooh, they manufacture, uh, they, they sell wine, okay? And they have one supplier, that does the wine making, <laughs> trying really hard not to disclose any of the confidential things. So they have one supplier that does the wine making. They have one supplier that does the bottling and the labeling. And they wanna know where each stage right at each stage where their inventory is at. So instead of Alicia's wonderful example of virtual warehouse one, virtual warehouse two, they could call it wine making and wine bottling, right? So they would be able to know where their inventory is at at any point in time. Sorry, I'm laughing at myself because I'm coming up with some great examples. Okay, so now if we are a manufacturer, I'm gonna go into the build assembly and I'm gonna go to inventory, build assemblies, and I'm just gonna type in my wonderful sample file and I'm gonna go ahead and pick my Atlanta warehouse. So some things that I wanna to talk to you about at this Atlanta warehouse 
how it automatically at some point I've told it stop asking me but every time I pick a warehouse up here at the very top go ahead and add that to my site down here okay so not every time that I'm manufacturing do I always have inventory on hand right sometimes we are in situations where I really need to, um, you know, have a wire nut orange, right? Pulled from my virtual warehouse one. I hope I put that in there. <laughs> and I need that delivered to me because maybe they're holding more product than I have in my in my warehouse. And so I'm scrambling to manufacture this and this product had to go out on Friday. So I call over there and I say, hey, I need you to send me two of these. I've got to get this done now. And so what I can do is I can come over here and I can click on this virtual warehouse and I can substitute my Atlanta site for my virtual warehouse. And this is really where I'm pulling it from, okay? So now I'm sure that there's some of you out there going, well, why wouldn't you do an inventory transfer? Well, here's why. I tell my clients, if you are transferring inventory and there's a particular amount of time that it takes to transfer that inventory from point A to point B, right? So if it's gonna take me a week, and shipping and those things, right? To actually receive, let's just say my orange wire nut, right? Then I wanna do an inventory transfer. If it takes 24 hours to get that, I'm gonna tell you that it is okay for you to do it like this, how I'm showing you on the screen. And the reason why is we are getting the same information. This is coming from the virtual warehouse. And I'm actually not having to do a transfer that is recording additional transactions in my company file. So I'm trying to maintain the same information as if I was transferring, but because it's showing me right here, it came from my virtual warehouse but I'm not having to add additional transactions which will increase my file size if I'm constantly doing this, right? Okay, we could also, for my winemaker, right? Where bottling and everything is happening all in the virtual warehouses. This is, a, is something that he does. He puts virtual warehouse one. This is where this finished good is taking place. So just imagine if all of this, you know, components down here, raw material is the wine, is the grapes. I'm already jumping to the wine. It's the grapes, right? It's all of the processing that it takes to break it from the grapes to an actual liquid, right? If that's what it's in here in this bill of materials, then warehouse one, my virtual warehouse one is going to be where I make my wine. And then I'm going to have another assembly, a finished good, where maybe I'm going to add this assembled item plus bottling and labeling, right? And labor maybe. Okay, and that can go from my warehouse one over to my warehouse two. So we can do manufacturing with virtual warehouses and track every single step along the way inside of QuickBooks, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and actually build this. Pretty sure I can build one. And, oh, maybe not in my sample file. can actually build one now, okay? So I'm gonna build that. 
Now I want to go ahead and finish out this process where I'm going to do my invoicing. Okay. Very similar to, ooh, I think I have about a couple of seconds. So if everyone can hang, hang with me for another minute or two, maybe about three minutes or so, I'm going to finish this out, show you the invoicing process. If you can't and you have to leave, remember to find us on our YouTube channel. So I'm going to go home to my home screen and I'm going to go ahead and finish out my invoicing. Okay. So maybe some of you are asking, how am I going to do my invoicing, right? If I'm just receiving and everything's in that virtual warehouse? Well, we're going to do it the same way. Okay, if we've had a sales order, we're going to create from the sales order the invoice and we're going to pick that virtual warehouse. If I've got things, for example, I've got my wire nut. I remember that I put some of these in here, right? My virtual warehouse one, I know I received that in. I, I can always click on this box in the quantity and I can pop up and see where do I have my product? Where is it being stored at? I've got 1197 in virtual warehouse one. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that this is where I'm pulling it from. I can pull the same item from multiple sites on an invoice if I need to, right? So I've also, if I go look at this, I have some in my Atlanta warehouse and I've got some in my distribution center. So I can go ahead and I can pull from my Atlanta warehouse as well, okay? So we can have multiple sites on our, on our invoices. We can pull our finished good from our virtual warehouses and QuickBooks will update throughout the process every step we take, all right? So we're gonna save and close. And now we have completed the cycle of actually invoicing from our virtual warehouse process. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed learning about virtual warehouses related to inventory management. And I hope that you meet us back here next week as we continue our deep dive into QuickBooks Enterprise.